Hey everyone, my name is Danilo Petrovic. I'm Ilya Marchenko. I'm Dennis Kuda. I'm Evgeny Donsko. I'm Henry Laksan. I'm Peter Torepko and you're listening to the Game to Love podcast. Hey, welcome back, tennis fans. Ah, oh, it's been that seems like uh, an age since we last uh, saw each other, but this one was a little bit of an impromptu podcast, uh, brought upon by some recent events which have been happening in the tennis world. And uh, I had to uh, pinch myself. I thought, are they talking about Gail Monfils? No, they're not. They're talking about Gail Falkenberg. So, JG, you're the man in the know on Gail Falkenberg. So, uh, mate, uh, I can't wait to hear all the, the facts and stats you have coming up. Well, mate, there's only one gal right now who's hitting the heights, and it's not Von Feast. So, <laughs> I say hitting the heights. For people who don't know, people are probably kicking on this video thinking, how crazy is this? Is it April Fool's? No, it's not April Fool's. We're in, we're in May now. Um, and Gal Falkenberg is a 74-year-old tennis player uh, who plays in the ITFs every now and then. And I say <laughs> yeah. every now and then lightly because it's not a regular thing she plays every year. No. Uh, she turns up when she feels like it. She has a bit of time <laughs> off and she thinks, you know what? I'm going to play an ITF this year and I fancy I'm going to go for it. And she's just been back in action. Uh, was it yesterday or the day before? In, yes. uh, in an ITF in uh, Naples which is awesome. Yeah, uh, It's a 25K tournament. I know. It didn't go to plan for her. We'll get on to that in a, mid <laughs> in a minute. But I just want to give a shout out to everyone who's joined us in the chat. We've got Table Tennis here, uh, Almino. Uh, we've got Thomas Rock here. Hey. Uh, they're all talking about Sakari. Obviously, she's playing right now, not doing too well. Uh, Abassa as well. So cheers back. for joining us. I think she's coming back. Did she win the second set? Uh, she was. She won the second set, eleven nine on the tie. But now she's a break up in the third. Come on, Maria. So we like to hear. Probably taking a leaf out of a uh, Gal Falkenberg's. Well, but... enough about that. Let's talk about some real <laughs> tennis. Some real <laughs> tennis, because for me, Gal Falkenberg, it's a special story. Seventy four years old, still playing. Um, yep. And people were thinking, oh, she must have had such a really long career. How long has she been on the tour for? People will be surprised. She started playing tennis at the age of 38 years old. Um, and then about two years later, she played her way up to about 360th um, in the world, which is amazing, to be fair. That at such an, uh, an old age, she managed to, to come, climb through the rankings. Uh, brilliant story. I don't know if you want to get up the rankings. I see you've got it there. So, <laughs> This yeah. is where she started off, 1986. Oh my gosh, goodness. long, long time ago. And this is when she's starting her career as a, what, 38-year-old? Uh, is that what I said? 38-year-old, yeah. Mate, and, it's crazy. And the story just gets better because from there onwards, she actually gets into a, um, into a qualifier <laughs> for Australian Open of all tournaments. I know, mate. I which know. is remarkable. So 1988. Yeah. She qualif she goes through the qualification in, in the Australian Open and she wins her first round match. Yes, she beats she uh, the Australian in her hometown country, <laughs> Alison de Vries. She beats her 6-love, six 6-1. Six so Gal was uh, brewing up a storm on this day. It was a Gal Force wins in, in mm -hmm. Australia. <laughs> she was going for it. And uh, it's unbelievable, really. She was... Like people are going to talk about the way she plays now, but she must have had something relatively good about her to be competing at that age and at least getting into these tournaments and playing. You can say maybe the level back then wasn't as good as it is now, but it's still all comparable, isn't it? And, and it's all comparative, should I say? And right at, at that moment, she was trying her best to get into tournaments. It's been a lifelong dream of hers to be playing tennis. She talks about how much she loves tennis. Uh, as 12 Travel 21 says, she would have been in her 40s then. So it's still a good achievement to win a match. Um, yeah. I just find the story just bemusing. I said it to Ben and I thought we have to do the podcast on this because it is just mental. And people will be wanting to know who, who she is. And for someone who started so late in life, she is like the female Aslan Karatsev. And the question I've got for you, Ben, <laughs> is how far can she go? What is her stock? Is she a Dogecoin? 
How um, high can Gao <laughs> go in the leaderboard, mate? In the rankings? <laughs> well, I'm I'm worried if there is a Gal on court, she might get blown over, mate. That's all I'm. Thinking. Mate, don't take my part. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, unfortunately, uh, I don't think she has. Um, I don't think there's much scope for uh, her getting too far in many tournaments. Uh, I like the fact that she's still out there. She's still keeping the fitness going uh, at 74 years old. She's still trying to play competitively, which is great to see. Uh, I'd love is to it see. Uh, well, don't forget, this was somebody who uh, went two close sets with Jennifer Capriati uh, back in the day, mate. 7664, I believe. Uh, from Gail's uh, own mouth herself. So I have to take her word for that, I think. But, uh, mate, uh, she obviously I think played... you can learn a lot from her, though, mate. She's a, she's a woman of many morals. She's still trying to play tennis. You're always moaning that you're at your desk and you're, you're, your joints are hurting. Oh, exactly. I can't play. Gail's out there, 74, trying her best to play. She doesn't drink. She's never smoked. And Good she job. is just the overall athlete and someone I think you, Ben, should aspire to be more like. I think it's a testament to her to still be playing and still wanting to get into tournaments and playing uh, professional tennis. Uh, the fact that she can step onto a court against some of these players and even give them a little bit of a game, credit to her. And the fact she wants to, I think she set herself some targets, hasn't she? She wants to just yeah. try and win a professional uh, tennis match at 74 years old. She did play, uh, was it a young French player, I believe, uh, in her last match, she was 20 yep. years old, 54 years her senior. But everyone she's playing right now are young guns. And um, uh, let's be honest, is it going to happen for her? That's what I want to ask you. It's her big goal to win a match in her 70s. I'm asking you, Ben, will she be able to conquer that achievement and, and, and say that she's won a tennis, a professional tennis match, whether it be on the ITFs or not, at her age? Can she do it? No. <laughs> That's my personal opinion. Unfortunately, I'd be happy if she could win a game. Uh, if she, if she could win a game, I'd be very impressed. But the the level of tennis, a game or a set? No, not even close to a set. A game, I'd be happy. I think. Uh, I don't know if you have the result of her of her last matchup. Do well, before you? we get on to that, let's not jump the gun. Let's have a look at her <laughs> career as a whole because we're still talking about the history here. So if you go to your tab just along there, Ben. Okay. It's another image right. I sent you across over over the WhatsApp. Uh, sure. And That's this that. is her head-to-head. -head. <laughs> no, uh, overall overall statistics. Sorry, not head-to-head. -head. So this is her overall statistics in a professional level. So it includes ITF, WTA, Billie Jean King Cup. And you can see overall she's played 86 matches. Yep. She's had seven wins. So oh, let's wow. not get it twisted. She's not a world beater. She's not someone who's <laughs> really? taken, the, taken the tour by storm, who wins a lot of matches. But I just think it's a remarkable story that someone who, let's be honest, loses all the time, still has so much fight to get back on court. I'm looking at it from my perspective now. I, I play tennis at my local club. If I lose the first set and I start the second set where I'm sort of down a little bit, maybe down a break, or uh, even if I'm just struggling to really hold my serve and I'm just about getting over the line, my mental side of things, I'm starting to doubt myself massively. I start thinking, oh, this game's so annoying. I really beat myself up. And often I've got a really quite a poor attitude, I would say, where if I'm really like having a bit of a bad run, it makes me not want to play tennis for a while until I find my confidence again. She has the ability to go out there, get double bageled, and then <laughs> go again the next week. And she's, she's more than happy to do it. And people can say, one, it could be delusional. But I actually find it quite motivational. For someone like myself who can't do that, it bothers me. I'm not a very good loser. I think it's just amazing that she, at her age, when people are like sort of giving and sort of giving, not giving up on life, just sort of taking everything a bit slower to be playing ITF matches at a professional level against people who are like 50 years younger than her. How does she still keep getting in the tournaments? That's what I want to know. So, brilliant question, Ben. I'm glad you asked. So yeah. I did a bit of digging because I wanted to know <laughs> how easy is it to enter an ITF? Like, what are the criteria for this? And it's not that hard, apparently. So I've got some things here. So JG's entering an ITF next week. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm actually kind of... Um, I really want to. Nice, I really man. want to. I think if Gal can do it, why not? She's motivated me 
to maybe just go for it and don't worry about it. But <laughs> I, think, I don't think it's that easy, to be honest. <laughs> Protect and rank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, I was saying power to her. I've got no excuses. Yeah, hopefully you guys or uh, who are watching this can look at it as like a bit of motivation. Um, so we've got on Twitter here, Mister Go Go Four. I asked the question because I was unsure how easy is it to get into these ITF tournaments, and he said you turn up hoping someone in qualifiers doesn't show or is late, and if you have your pin number and you pay, you're in. Nice. So it's that easy. That's that's how easy it is. You just show up. You just have to hope there's one local to you so you can uh, turn up. Well, but is this the case for Gail? Is she just turning up and waiting or are they just... Uh... I think you have to you have to pay a certain thing. Apparently, she's very popular with a lot of the women on tour. I can imagine. <laughs> Mate, she's she's got a few tales to tell from playing uh, all over the years. So, And she's uh, quite a familiar face, I think, to a few of the people. So... Yeah, maybe uh, <laughs> Thomas Roxanne and Jay Genius and Gail Genius mixed doubles <laughs> partnership. I think it has to happen. I think that's the oh, one. I, I might reach out to her and see if we can arrange some kind of doubles because I'm down for it. I think we'd probably be favoured on the hard court because she's slightly better on hard. Um, she's got the six wins as opposed to only the one on clay. We probably shouldn't have clay background, to be fair. We should have gone for the hard court background in our, in our green screens today. But... She's, we have to go be honest. And the recent match she played was on clay. It didn't go to plan for her. I know we was talking before. We were thinking about maybe even doing a live watch long for it, but there's no stream whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, it's very difficult to track down. You can you can understand why it's not a very high ranked tournament whatsoever. No. It's only qualifying for an ITF as well. Yeah. Um, and I was making some predictions before, wasn't I? And I was actually saying she's going to serve first and hold her serve. Um, I was I really say? fancying her to hold her serve, and then the, the lady she played was her name Piquet, was it or Figuet? Oh, Figuet. She's I think she's French, a French girl, yeah. twenty years old or so. I was expecting her then to be a bit worried, <laughs> and still win maybe six one six love after that. But I was just expecting Gal to come out the out of the traps fast. It wasn't to be. She ended up getting double bageled, wow. a little bit disappointing. Um, but yeah. That's the way it goes. We've got Almino saying, let's get Gal on the podcast. I really do want it to happen. I'm going to try my best to try and get Gal on there. Um, I'm not sure if she's going to want to come on, but if she does, we'll get her on for sure. Yeah, indeed. Uh, yeah, it was Fik Fiket was the name of the uh, tennis player that she played. Uh, I can sort of just bring up. Yeah, it's a an ITF tournament in Florida. Uh, it's a 25K tournament. It's not bad. Um, unfortunately, she won't be taking away any prize money because she got double bagel in that one. I don't know if you've got it off the screen there. Uh, bear with me one sec. I'll just uh, try and put it up so you guys can have a, a quick look. Uh, I did have it on the other screen, but for some reason... Mate, I'll be honest, though. When I saw this story on Twitter and stuff, I was thinking, is this a joke? Um, but it's, 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 it's true. She is a 74-year-old lady who plays tennis now on the ITF. So I think it's just a remarkable story, to be fair. Um there's going to be a lot of questions around it. And we've got to look at the other side of things as well. I think yeah. you, when I first said to you, you was a bit negative maybe, probably more so than me, because you was like, what's she doing? Like, Why don't she just retire? Do you no, still have that say, same... I, I didn't say retire, but I just said... Why don't you just... No, you didn't say... You said, why is she still doing this? No, I didn't. It wasn't even about why was she still doing it. I know why she's still doing it. And I actually applaud her for actually playing and still... Uh, wanting to play tennis but i don't think this is the level for her to be playing at i think that it, i mean fair enough if you're not taking anyone else's spot still go for it for if you want to keep going for it i'm all for it do it but for me just just maybe be try and become a club champion or something like that wherever you play i don't think playing players who can beat you six love six love is going to improve your game uh, in any way maybe play some people maybe like 50 like 60 mm. years old might get a more competitive match. But... So just talking about her style of game, I don't know if you've seen a few videos <laughs> online. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a different type of style, isn't it? Yeah, it's very chop heavy, <laughs> I have to say. Uh, but I'm not mad at it. I like a bit of a Shesu way, a bit of a Nicolescu style, but uh, predominantly slice or chop. So I'm sure she probably was different back in the day, but. I know what it's like. Your uh, bones and your joints start aching a bit harder to get that rotation on the uh, on the topspin. 
So uh, <laughs> I can understand if you have to reduce it to a little bit of a so a serve wasn't bad though. Give her that. Well, it was a bit weird. The second serve, I noticed she really steps in. Have you noticed? Yeah. She steps in and really cuts down the angle, so she's in the middle of the court. I think it just means that if they get the return back, she doesn't have to. She's cover. She's already at the middle. Um, it, it doesn't really go. It's the ball toss isn't very high. Um, it's a very unique style, I must admit. But let's be honest, she's played in the Australian Open. As much as people can ridicule her, she's done a lot more than what a lot of people listening or the people ridiculing her have ever done in the sport of tennis. And she's still going to this day. Granted, she's getting pretty much battered at the moment. Um, yeah. I think, like you said, maybe the best thing for her to do is just Drop play down. against people who are not as good right now like i don't understand what she's gaining from playing these young well, professionals but you know what she's trying to gain she said it she spoke out she wants to win one professional match in her 70s and uh if she's not going to stop until she gets that win so at least she's persistent and at least she uh is she's got a goal in mind she wants to achieve it maybe i think the only way she's going to achieve it though i hate to be cruel is if other player retires probably during the match. Well, uh, well, let's just hold on that fault because she did have a very good um, recent year. I say really good. It wasn't great afterwards. She played two matches in one day and 12 travel 21 is just sort of bringing light to that. I don't know if you've got the information of the actual day. Uh, I'll let you have a little look at that. I forget what year it was now. I think it wasn't too long ago. But she played Taylor Townsend. But before she played Taylor Townsend, she played R Small. I think it's Robin Small. Yeah. And she thumped her. She absolutely thumped her on the day. Um, so that's pretty amazing. Then she got to play Taylor, Ta Ta Taylor Townsend. We know how good she's become. Uh, yeah, sort exactly. of off the boil a bit now, but still a top WTA player. So it's crazy that she's able to play against these amazing players. So there you, there you can see it was in Pelham, wasn't it? In yeah. 2016. So that's not that long ago, mate, she won a match. Not that long ago, but uh, Robin Small, whoever you are, uh, I hope you're not still playing tennis, I tell you. Because... Well, I had to have a look. I had a look at Robin Small because I, I was fascinated myself and I believe she played a match in 2018. And I think all of her matches, they're all, all double bagels as well. So um, I'm not sure too much more about her age and everything. I forget now. but Maybe not the I, sport for her. She, maybe. It's not the sport for her. I don't think Robin Small's a very good tennis player. So maybe a not, good, not a very good indication of where uh, Gal's game's at. No, possibly not, mate. Possibly not. Uh, have you got any more interesting facts about Gail Falkenberg? No, I think we'll, we'll leave it there, but I just want to end <laughs> it on one thing, Ben, and that's a question I've got for you about Gal. So oh, hopefully God. you're ready. Uh, and the question is this. It's just a yes or no, really. I want to know just your honest opinion, if you think it happened or not. Uh, or true or false, you could say. So true or false, has Gal ever played Naomi Osaka? True or false? I'd say false. Uh -uh. 2013, oh, Gal wow. played, played Naomi Osaka. So fun, fun fact for everyone out there. Gal has actually played Naomi Osaka. And I knew you wouldn't have known that. So I was, I was over the moon to tell you live on the podcast. So one the one nil to Jay Genius. What was it? One nil. What was the score? Oh, six love, six love. Naomi <laughs> <laughs> no, Come on. well i don't know least, if to bring it up you can probably if you just type it in it comes up on the screen oh does it oh, okay falkenberg uh osaka that's osaka. mental we know how, obviously what osaka's doing now she's had the chance to play against naomi osaka and share the same court as her she in a competitive played. match as well uh there you go she's played her in where did she play her? 2013, oh, is... I believe. Yeah, is there it? you go. Rock Hill in a twenty five yep. in the quarterfinals. No qualifier, isn't it? Oh, is it? <laughs> 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 I don't think she was in a quarterfinal. She made the quarterfinals of all of these. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see there some of the scores. Um, they don't look great. She's got a few six twos in there, but most of the time it is the double bagel or the breadstick. It's a tough one. She's struggling right now. You look at Naomi Osaka's last 10 matches. Well, apart from the last one against Muk Mukova, she's not done too bad. You can see Australian Open win. <laughs> and you can see Gal there just at the top. You could but say. I thought, I thought that's a great uh, little uh, way to end our segment on Gal. 
You could you could say that uh, Gail was the catalyst for Naomi Osaka going on to win those Grand Slams, really. Yeah, you could say that. Maybe Gail was the reason Naomi Osaka is the player she is today. We never maybe, know. maybe. But anyway, I'm changing this. Boom, because we're going straight back into uh, Mutua Madrid open mode. Uh, let's get some real tennis. Sorry, Gail. Uh, real. <laughs> Yeah, let's get some real tennis uh, talk going. Uh, well, I just want to talk about what's been going on in uh, the Mature Open so far. We've had some shock results. We've had, well, I'll say a shock. You predicted it. Grigor Dimitrov, he crashed out uh, to Lloyd Harris. Uh, you called it. Oh, and our lad Karatsev, he's through. Lovely. Jubbly. Up against Schwartzman next round. What do you reckon on that? So far, mate, you've not said any shocks. I know you were talking about some shocks. I'm waiting to hear them because Alcaraz, both, of them, both of them I predicted. Alcaraz, I thought Ma- he would beat him. Eagled, Manorino. Yeah. Uh, Giron knocking out Andujar. Uh, and yeah. Carreño Busta, who doesn't do well here in Madrid. I think the best, best result in Madrid has been the third round yeah. from uh, what I've uh, read up on. And uh, it's a bit shocking, really. Someone's so good, but he's not really a clay quarter, I don't think. I think he's more of a hard quarter. I don't think this really is his tournament. So. No, nah, Carino Busta. What, Carino Busta? He's always been a clay court. He's just recently been playing very well on hard. You see Kyrgios, he called him a clay court or on Twitter. Um, but Del is a tough player. Del is a tough player. I think he's got the favourable head-to-head against Busta, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's four and two. Uh, but you'll have to definitely check that. You've got Kwetfa. Um, he beat Apelka. I was really impressed with that. Evans beat Shardy. And to be honest, looking there for my bracket, uh, I don't see one I've really got wrong. I think Buster was probably the only one. Did uh, well, mate. So I'm doing okay so far with the bracket side of things. I think I called uh, Kesmanovic to beat Isna. That's the only one there. Well, this one, I got one over on you about the only one. Milman knocks yep. out Hubert Hercatch. Called that one. Yeah, and Thomas Rock saying Lloyd Harris, his name should only be whispered. I agree. The Whisperer moves through to the next round. Uh, Yannick Sinner went through against Pella. Not sure what happened there. He just dropped out. Uh, looked like he was coming back as well in that. He was a breakdown yeah. in the second. Came back to 4-4 and then just disappeared. He must be suffering with some kind of injuries and stuff, isn't he? Fakina, yeah. Herbert, I enjoyed that match. I like the bit of sportsmanship from uh, Herbert. Obviously, Fakina t- takes another tumble. I don't think I've ever watched a Davidovich Fikina match where he hasn't fallen <laughs> over. <laughs> I'm just yeah, glad mate. he wasn't injured this time when he fell over. He got up and um, Herbert dusted off the clay. So they stopped the match. The crowd was clapping. It was quite nice. That's nice. And uh, he stood there with his arms up while uh, <laughs> Herbert was giving him the one two over. Nice, mate. Didn't give him a little swift jab trying to get one over. But what a long match. It was nearly three hours long, that match. Three yeah. tie break sets. Uh, did well. He's probably going to be tired for Kina, though. He's just played a final in yeah. the last tournament against Ramos, which we'll get on to probably after we round these up. The, got the Cam niches. Norrie there. He withdrew. Yeah, the Nishes, mate. The Nishes are through. Both the Nishes, Nishikori and Nishioka, both made it through. Uh, also, Andre Rublev had a bit of a scare there. Your man, the uh, French Open uh, junior champion, Tommy Paul. You called correctly to go through the first round. Didn't yeah. make it through the second, though. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was going to beat Rublev at one point. I thought it would have been good for my bracket as well, but it wasn't to be. <laughs> yes. So and then some you... of these, to be fair, are pretty much expected. A good had a lot of a... He, he had massive scare, to be fair. He had to... Yeah. He, he lost a few, I think, three match points in that second set. He then made short work, hard work of it in the third. He was serving out for the match. Couldn't get served out. Got broken. And then ended up winning it on breaking uh, Chechenato to love at the end. So fair play. Yeah. But I feel like the big one on that list is right at the bottom. And Benoit Pair wins a match. Wow. Breaking news. That could that was very close to being the title of this video. It was either Benoit Pair wins a match or Gal is back. And uh, we chose, went for Gal. I'm sure you can uh, tell which one I was going to probably vote for. But uh, anyway, <laughs> Gal <laughs> stole the headlines. Uh, Benoit Pair, is he back? Is this him uh, back for good? Or is it Bastiash really just won a tournament, his second of the year, and tired? I think Pair was just loving the atmosphere. There was a Vuvuzela in the stands. Every point he won, there was there was a uh, blow in the Vuvuzela. He loved it, mate. <laughs> I, used to hate, I hated that. That that World Cup, that, oh, it killed me, that World Cup. 
But yeah, Benoit Pair, I'm hoping it's the the real Benoit's back. He was saying it's tennis without without fans is no tennis. And he likes the whole fact that there's an atmosphere and a, and a vibe and he was feeding off it. And we saw better tennis from him. Basashvili, though, for me, was just tired. you got Almino saying, yeah, the crowd was insane. I love it, mate. I'm all for it. I love having a good vocal crowd. I think it brings yeah. the atmosphere up a little bit, makes it more of a spectacle and certainly uh, allowed to, for us to see a bit better tennis because Benoit Pair played quite well. I think he, he deserved the win in the end. Indeed, mate. Uh, he plays up to the crowd. He also wind him up as well at the same time so it can work on both ways but it's better than seeing him play to an empty crowd because he just doesn't even bother just there's not even uh no point being on the court uh for me uh so glad to see him back in the winner's column yep. Chapavalov disappoints once more unfortunately Bublik through uh don't know if that's a shock or not to be honest Mm, not really Apo just disappoints and I think the odds are wrong I don't even like the odds I think it's an even match and these ones down here and look at the well we're just talking about Lloyd Harris going through uh, yeah he obviously went out to uh, De Menor. Yep. Uh Dominic team successful comeback nice easy one yeah we're thinking about doing a watch along for it didn't have time really in the end for work but Dominic team comes back the last, uh, uh, it's the, the, the last match he played before this one on clay was actually against Diego Schwartzman in the French Open, which yeah. was an epic five-setter. First time we've seen him this year on clay courts and, mate, just to be expected, really. Yeah. I really fancy him in this tournament. Hopefully, he has a good run. Yeah. People will know from my uh, bracket preview. Go check that video out if you haven't already. Uh, I've actually got Dominic Team beating uh, Rublev, I believe, so... Well, I, I, think, I believe it's going to happen still. I'm quite confident in that pit. He's well rested. Let's put it that way. And uh, Rublev, he's been playing a lot of tennis. And Tommy Paul uh, nearly had the better of him today. Yep. Uh, Berrettini looking good though. Yeah, he's got a chance of winning the whole thing as well. To be honest, yeah. all it takes is Rafa or Sitter has to drop out against someone. Rafa could come under a bit of trouble against Sinner, in my opinion. Um, and you never know what happens if Sitter pass. Anything could happen. But uh, yeah. the way he's playing, you didn't, wouldn't think it would happen. But if it does, it would open it up for someone like a Berrettini to go all the way and win it. And don't forget, mate, the big, big tie of the next round. It's happening tomorrow. Somebody's birthday. Be careful what you wish for for your birthday when you're turning 18. It's Carlos Alcaraz. He will be playing Rafael Nadal on his 18th birthday. What a birthday present. That is. Could you even ask for anything more if you're a, a tennis player, really? A Spanish tennis player, classed as being the next Rafael Nadal. And on the day that alcohol can pass through your lips in the UK, <laughs> it's the day. Now. Please remember he's a sportsman. He's not going to be drinking yeah, alcohol, especially Alcaraz. He's the most like, uh, it just strikes me as someone who just lives, dies, breathes, eats everything tennis. I can see the headlines if he does. It's like Alcaraz, alcohol. It's got too, too <laughs> similar, isn't it? Hey, I think there's some uh, connotations there. Some uh, some papers are going to be using that one, I think. But mm. that's going to be an exciting one, mate. Do you reckon Rafa stands his chance going out here? Yeah? No, nah, not for me. I think sure? uh, Alcaraz, I, I said it on the draw preview. I stand by. I think he could be a bit in awe of the occasion, uh, especially in Spain as well. The crowd, although they would they like cheer? Alcaraz to do well, they're still always going to pick Rafa. I don't care, yeah, even I if it's know, a young mate. Spanish guy coming through. I, I you know. watch, mate. It's in Madrid. The Madrid fans love Rafa on the day. They're going to get on top of this 18-year-old kid, mate. That's they're not going to get on top of him. I think they're going to be quite neutral to the whole thing. And they wouldn't be that against him beating Rafa, but they're still going to be wanting Rafa to win. I think if Alcaraz takes a break early on or something, you watch them, all the Vamos is for Rafa to get back in. Yeah, well, I'm sure that there will be. It would be like uh, in this match against Tsitsipas, wasn't it? They mm. were really, really pulling for him to get back into that match. Uh, and he did it in a fantastic fashion. He did it the whole way through the tournament. Constant comebacks, one after the other. <sighs> True Rafa. He's back. Team was watching him warm up on court, wasn't he? He was like, yeah, hmm, decent player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's a funny clip. <laughs> just watching him go I didn't even see it was Rafa at first I just heard the noise that like, yeah Not every time he's hitting the ball you can just tell his grunt is so distinctive but yeah you know it was Rafa down there just creaming a few balls uh, to whoever was on the other side of the net I'm not sure 
a uh, bit scary stuff. Dominic team, I bet he's like licking his lips, but he wants to get on court and try and do what City. I'm just so happy could. he's back. I'm so happy he's back. It yeah. would be great to see a Rafa team uh, semi final in this event if it, if it is to be. But let's just wait and wait and find out, I guess. Mate, we've got some uh, matches going on in the women's yep. at the moment. Uh, obviously, Sakar is trying to serve out the match right this second. Uh, she's struggling, but <laughs> to serve it out by the looks of it. 15.30. Let's touch and re- on something. And remember, we're in a later stage now on the women. So the women yep. started a few days before the men's, yep. which I still find weird. I'm not sure why they're doing that. Another thing about the women's, I'm a bit worked up about, I must admit. I feel like it's a good place to vent about it. Is on Go Google. On. The WTA have not allowed um, the, the the results to, to appear on Google. So if you type in Madrid Open, they've they've completely wiped off all WTA women's results of of Google results anymore. Why? They just don't want it. They they've just for like I'm not sure what they're trying to do. It's like a marketing. They're putting it down to a marketing strategy. That's bizarre. Yeah, ridiculous. Well, if when you're trying to trying to raise the profile of the women's game. I think that's one of the last things you go about doing. Yeah, definitely, mate. I, I can't understand why they would be doing that. Why would they? I mean, it's a marketing they... strategy. They must have something up their sleeve of an app or something. I'm not sure. Oh, we know that there's a good app out there. And if you guys haven't downloaded it yet, you better do so. The tennis app. Just think of the word tennis, but remove the vowels. And then that's the name of the app. Go and download that. Uh, fantastic. The best yeah, tennis app. The link's app in the description there. as well. Best tennis app out there. So get all your live scores, bios, previous matches, future matches, all our contents on there as well. If you want to uh, catch up on any podcast, audio or video, it's all on there. Fantastic stuff, isn't it? So, mate, these are going to be the quarterfinals next, but let's just talk about these quickly. Uh, That match there at the top, mate, I mean, it looks like it was a fairly comfortable last two sets for Mertens, but we know it's far from the truth, don't we? We know you were saying what you were saying earlier. Go on, you can talk about it because... No, I don't know exactly what I was saying to you, but I'm not sure what you really were alluding to. I think it's the fact that at least Mertens, I just don't trust her ever. Uh, She's a brilliant tennis player. This is her first big win, I think. She must have won a few others, but it's the first one I can remember at the top of my head. She seems to beat everyone she's expected to beat. She plays against anyone was a bit challenging. She usually buckles and loses in straight sets. So I'm really happy that she was able to turn that around today and beat Halep. For yeah. the life of me, so after that first set, I thought it was going to be more of the same. She's going to lose in straight sets. Um, but she turned it around and managed to win the match. She's just a frustrating player for me. Um, quite high in the rankings now. I forget exactly what, 20th in the world or something. Uh, 16th uh, now. 16th yeah. in the world. She doesn't play like a 16th in the world player in terms of against the top 10. She can't beat them. So I'm happy she managed to finally get a win there. Yeah, uh, You've got Sabalenka there as well. Really good one to talk oh, about. Her it. clay court um, tennis generally is not very good. She's not got a favourable record on clay. I think she's lost more than she's won in her career. However, yeah. recently she's changed that around. She's turned that on it on its head a little bit and started picking up some wins. And people now are sort of labelling her as like the, the, the queen of the dirt, mate. She looks like the one to beat. Uh, beating could, Pagula mate. today, 6-1, 6-2. I've got to go all the way to the final in my bracket. Um, I like the look of it. I think she could even win it. She's a scary prospect on any surface now, I think. I think she has uh, one of these uh, peronial contenders on all surfaces. When you got that power that Sabalenka has and it translates uh, across the, the courts like a Karatsev, firing on the hard court, firing on the clay court. And taking out people in quick fashion, what like only losing three games to Pagula, who's playing mm-hmm. well as well. She yeah. played well in the last round, absolutely battered her. Uh, yeah. I want to go back, touch on Mertens, just because I was wanted to say, I think she's the type of player who uh, she seems to only play well when she's behind, like against these players. I think that was uh, the of, confidence is off. That's what I was saying. Yeah, I, I forget now. That's exactly what I said, isn't it? When she's da- when she's down. That's when I actually think that she's got a good chance of breaking back because she plays her better tennis. She plays with a little bit more freedom. Yeah, yeah. She's just a nervous player. I think mentally she's just not good enough. I'm sorry. I don't want to be harsh on Mertens because ability wise, she's one of the best in the game. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I said to you, she'll never win a Grand Slam. I really believe that. I don't think she's got the mental fortitude unless she changes something drastically because oh. she's very good, but she's only great when she's down losing. And then she's only as good as she gets all right. Like you'd expect her to get back in that match against Hallett and then lose it. 
but she managed to turn her fortunes around today and win. So maybe this is the changing of the tide and she could go on a nice little run now and this could give her the much needed confidence to turn turn it all around. Like we've seen with Sitterpass recently, he's done exactly the same. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I just it's just shocking to see that like, even in that third set she won the second set and then as soon as the second third set started she just got broken straight away it's almost like oh the now the pressure's back on again like yeah. I'm gonna win the match now I'm gonna start losing again then she started losing it then she comes back again yeah I've seen it really so many times man I remember we saw, there's a strange. few matches that, when at work I was talking to you about at the time yeah. uh, we've got MC uh, Quadrio here saying Mertens is so solid from the baseline when the game's under control exactly that when, when it's all under control um, and she's even if she's down like losing it's sort of under control in the fact that she doesn't have any expectations but when she's having to like really force the issue and she's got a good chance of winning it's not really in her control anymore and that's where she fumbles and the mental side of the game, and it? it's just mm. a hard one to overcome. Hopefully, she can do it. She has all the ability. It's just she's fallen down on the mental side once more. Uh, I know that we were going to touch on a couple of the matches from last week. Uh, obviously, yep. we had a tournament winner, a couple of tournament winners. Uh, we obviously had Brit uh, Cam Norrie. He got through to the final on clay, mate. Yeah, look at that. Third most wins in 2021 after Rublev Tsitsipas. Fantastic. He's only lost to Nadal and Ramos. Uh, and Ra Ramos in three sets, close ones, and a tie break in the third. So Norrie's Cam playing serious tennis. Watch out for Cam Norrie. Could be uh, the, the, the best, well, the, the highest ranked uh, English player soon. So I don't I know. Dan that. Evans is right up there. But I think Cam Norrie versus Dan Evans is now becoming an exciting battle. I said, if I said, if I, he keeps going through the tournament, if I go against him, I'll keep going against him because I want to see these GB players keep qualifying, mate. He keeps on going, keeps proving me wrong. Keep doing yeah. it, Cam. Love seeing it. Uh, yeah, and on records, there's no record to talk about. And that's just yeah. Billy. He's yeah. the guy who's won more tournaments this year than any other player. Yeah, He's won the same amount of events, tournaments, should I say, as Djokovic and Nadal combined. <laughs> <laughs> so so early to be uh, throwing these stats out there. Well, uh, Australian Open. He's, sure? he's won as many as Federer, Team, Djokovic and the Dow combined. Wow. That is a statistic. What about Medvedev? Mm, no, that no, Medvedev. He's won, he's won one. No, what did he, he win? Won one. He won one against, uh, who was the guy? Herbert in uh, oh, Paris. Right. It was in Paris, was it? No, no you are getting mixed up. Yeah, he won't get Oh, yeah, last. he did. Yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. We We've got uh, Thomas Rock here saying <laughs> 199, just a couple of Falcon bucks. And I think that's <laughs> some of our first tips in May, I believe. I think maybe I've had some, a few more. I'm not sure. I'll have to oh, check. Okay. But Thomas Rock, you will be going on the leaderboard. So we'll update that after this podcast. Thanks for that. Yeah, indeed. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, anybody ha has... Oh is new here at the moment or if you are new and you're watching this on repeat and you haven't joined our discord then make sure you head on over to our discord there is about well 300 people chatting tennis or 24 7 really mm -hmm. and there's lots of cool different forums on there uh lots of people creating up fun new ideas and fun polls things like that uh want to give a shout out to jordan 94 as he's known uh, for running quite an interesting uh, little poll, which is going on. Obviously, Tyson Fury, a uh, figurehead of the channel. He's uh, known for calling people a dosser. You're a dosser. And uh, he's creating uh, what could be uh, well, a regular feature on Game to Love, a dosser of the week. We used to have L of the week. Yeah, I think dosser of the week fits it better. So... Without uh, as, as Almino says, sorry, yeah. Ben, join Discord. Us Dossers never sleep. And if Melez is listening to this, I don't think he's here live, but someone, Thomas Rock, go get him because this is going to be right for him. Yeah, exactly right. And hopefully Jordan's there. Hopefully and Jordan we can as well. Do, it, do him justice. But uh, yeah, this is uh, the new segment for you guys. Dosser of the week. Dosser! That's it. Dosser of the week. The first one. I know there's been a couple, but this is the first one we've been able to actually cover. So without further ado, mate, guess we better get into it.
So, Dosser of the Week. We got three nominations. Alex Zverev. He got knocked out uh, of his own tournament in Germany by a qualifier. Terrible performance. And we had Elena Svitolina. She lost six match points and a 5-1 lead and lost the third set to Teichmann. Number three, Francis TFO. He had match point against uh, Kevin Anderson in the second set. Went on to lose the match. Oh, typical, typical Dossa. But who is the Dossa of the week? It is... Dossa! Dossa! It's Alex Zverev, the Dossa of the week. So that is it. The first Dossa of the week sums it up. Dossa! There you go, <laughs> Dosser of the Week. <laughs> Mate, I was just going to leave you to it. I wasn't going to add anything to you there. I think it was perfect. But I agree, Zverev is the Dosser of the Week. Ilya Vashka is a class tennis player, playing really well. Took a set off Nadal recently as well. But come on, just do a little bit better. The nature of the way he lost didn't seem to put much fight in. I thought it was poor. I know he's sort of blaming his, um, I forget what part of his body it is now. It's always something new with him. But there's some injury he's got. Is it his wrist or something? I forget now. And it's no affecting idea. his serving. 14 double faults from Zverev. Terrible. Yeah. You look at the stats. The stats said, tell another story. I didn't get to see the match, but seeing the stats and the way it sort of panned shocking, out and yeah. from Twitter as well, just not good. So there we go. Dossa of the week. Alex Zverev, fully deserved. Yeah. First of many. It's going to be a new addition. We're going to be bringing to a lot more of these sort of like weekly roundup podcasts. Indeed. Uh, they're not always going to be about yeah. Gal Falkenberg. This is sort of a one-off. Um, but yeah, Matt, yeah, Thanks to Jordan. yeah, cheers to Jordan. And make sure if you uh haven't voted on the Discord, go to Jordan's uh channel that he's uh set up on the Discord where he'll be running these and we can announce the, them on the podcast every week. So we want to see as many votes in there as possible. So, gonna be exciting, exciting to see. So, yeah. no worries, I think we'll wrap it up there. Uh, we're going to be trying to bring some uh, live watch-alongs during the week. I'm pretty busy with work, but I think Ben might try and do one tomorrow. If not, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, big thanks to everyone who watched this one today. Uh, big thanks to Gal Falkenberg <laughs> for on, just Gal. creating more enjoyment in tennis than, than there ever has been before. Um, I wish her all the best in the future and hope she keeps going and get that win. Um, like and subscribe if you haven't already, guys. The tennis website we're going to be launching is going to be coming this week. So if you want to write any articles, uh, reach out to me on Discord or on Twitter. Uh, if not, we'll see you very soon. Indeed, guys. See you soon. <laughs>